From the beginning, animals and then humans have derived their food energy from solar energy via green plants which synthesize carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water. This is photosynthesis. The size of the Earth's human population has always been controlled by its ability to collect sufficient food. For most of human history, there were only a few million people on Earth, since they depended on hunting and gathering to obtain their food from wild plants and animals. Slowly, farming developed. 2,000 years ago, there were about 300 million people on Earth. Earth's population then took 1,500 years to double to about 600 million. Then, as new lands began to be farmed in the Americas and other places, growth speeded up, reaching 1.7 billion by 1900. Then, something fantastic happened. Starting in America, then spreading to Europe, and with the Green Revolution in the developing world, we started using a second sun, fossil fuels. In addition to current sunshine, we started to use sunshine that reached the Earth millions of years ago. Ancient solar energy is now used to power our farming systems and provide fertilizer and pesticides, resulting in massive increases in food supplies, which enabled the population to triple in 70 years to 7 billion. We have used ancient sunshine to increase the carrying capacity of the Earth, but it took 300 million years for plants and microorganisms to convert this solar energy into the fossil fuels we now depend on. We now use on average 10 calories of fossil energy to deliver one calorie of food energy. This is an enormous mistake. Fossil energy is finite. Since 1984, we have been using four times the amount of oil than we have discovered. And when the ancient sun fades and dies, those calories become unavailable. The carrying capacity of the Earth will be reduced, resulting in starvation. In contrast to recent famines, the highly mechanized, oil-dependent advanced nations would be most vulnerable. Severe and sudden shortages may also be caused by geopolitical events, especially in the Middle East. Even now, world food supplies are unstable. Diesel shortages would drastically reduce production, causing panic buying, export bans and hoarding of food. The vast amount of ancient sunshine stored as fossil fuel that looked like a blessing may instead be a curse that has polluted our atmosphere and has given us a highly productive food system that cannot be sustained. Rebalance can only be achieved either by a painful population decline or an urgent adoption of farming systems not powered by ancient sunshine but that instead use just a fraction of the current solar energy that reaches the Earth's surface. This is about 7,000 times more than the world's present energy consumption. Tractor maker New Holland have a vision of an energy-independent farm producing its own electricity from wind, solar panels and biogas, then using electrolysis to produce hydrogen. Their electric-powered tractor would have fuel cells to convert the hydrogen back to electricity and water. The energy losses involved are huge. Using hydrogen-powered fuel cells to get 100 kilowatt of energy to the wheels of a tractor, you would need 397 kilowatt hours of electric energy costing around 40 pounds an hour at full load. If you were to store the energy in batteries, it would only use 154 kilowatt hours, costing around 16 pounds. This would also halve the amount of wind turbines, solar panels, etc. that would be needed. An equivalent diesel-powered tractor would need a 143 kilowatt engine and cost around 29 pounds an hour on full power. On top of that, diesel fuel causes significant emissions of CO2, and climate change is already causing weather-related food shortages. EU targets to reduce emissions by 80 to 95 percent by 2050 will not be met if farming emissions are not drastically reduced. Unlike household mains, which would take hours to charge a vehicle, farms are supplied by three-phase electricity at 440 volts, so a battery would be charged as fast as a tractor could drain it. Renewable farm-generated electricity supply would normally be linked to grid power. 
For some situations, grid power alone would be used with renewables such as wind farms, contributing a significant amount. It's already been shown that simply using electric wheel hub motors instead of mechanical drive can save up to 20% of fuel in conventional diesel tractors. The constant torque of electric motors, even at low speeds, would also improve the performance of an electric tractor compared with a diesel tractor of the same rated power, and fuel costs should be about 50% or less. Machines such as sprayers and spreaders would use electric drive instead of power shafts or hydraulic motors. Replacing the engine and fuel tank with a battery should be the obvious solution. The only problem is that a battery large enough to do a hard day's work before returning to base would be very big and expensive. As GPS now makes precision driverless tractors possible, a battery shuttle could be implemented. Intermachine telemetry would enable the tractor to be supplied in the field as needed with charged batteries to allow continuous working. Of course, there is always the choice or need for human input. Having an onboard three-phase charger, it will go to the farmstead to connect to an electricity supply. For large schemes or entire districts, power would be drawn from points on the existing electricity infrastructure or from purpose-built lines. Each kilometer of line could service up to 2,500 acres.